peace and blessings my people it is Anna Renee and I am your love power goddess coming to you all on this new day it is May 27th I believe Saturday May 27th it is about five minutes to 12 noon here in the Pacific Coast <laughs> the San Francisco Oakland Bay Area so Pacific Standard Time it is just about noon time straight up okay so peace and love to each and every one of you who are followers of the system that is the Metu Netter and who are waiting to hear what the next card is thank you all for your patience and welcome here to this the you are leaders channel of course you know why you're here it's because you are a leader maybe of tens hundreds thousands or even millions but you also know that the most important leader to be is the leader of one your own self and for that reason you seek out the knowledge of your ancestors that ancient wisdom that you know is there to guide you on your journey of self-knowledge so you don't mind taking the time to learn you are patient enough to dive in to the study of self and you are willing and even anxious <laughs> to know what it is and what it was that our ancient ancestors knew that allowed them to be the Osars that they were okay the God men and women okay who had manifested their higher self in the flesh okay and had with that knowledge of self and what comes with it learned astrology astronomy medicine uh, agriculture okay the earth realm and the energies that flow the electromagnetic energy all of that okay all of that they knew it okay because they tapped into the wisdom okay that is a gift of the Most High and you want to do the very same thing so you are seeking searching and you have found this channel the you are leaders channel where I give a tiny little slice of it based on what has been passed down to us through the eons of time through the Akashic records through the avatars like Ra Un Nefer Amen who wrote this book Metu Netter volume 1 the great oracle of Tehuti and the spiritual Egyptian spiritual system of cultivation okay I'm trying to read it backwards and so here you are and here I am doing my part a minuscule tiny part but a very important part all the same because what I'm simply doing is just passing on what has already been gifted through this book reading it putting it in video form okay so here you are here I am thank the most high for it I am going to get right into it reading the new card well the next card in the procession which is Ma'at okay Ma'at okay Ma'at Ma'at okay See that she's holding the scales of justice where she is measuring the heart against the lightness of the feather. And our hearts are supposed to be as light as a feather. Metaphysically and metaphorically speaking, okay, we are supposed to live the good life, the righteous life. And this is how we are judged in the judgment, okay? by how well we live our lives how righteously we live okay Ma'at the very beautiful one okay 
which represents Jupiter here in this card, okay? I would think that she represents Libra as well, but you know what? She represents Jupiter here, okay? And she's beautiful. Beautiful. The beautiful life of righteousness, okay? The narrow path, okay? Not everybody is willing or able even to walk that path. But you are. That's why you're here learning about these cards, okay? Learning about this system, okay? So I got her standing here and I got her standing there. And she is with the most high, okay? So my people... Thank you all for meeting me here. So let's get right into it. I'm reading from the Metu Netter Volume 1, The Great Oracle of Tahuti and the Egyptian System of Spiritual Cultivation by Ra Un Nefer Amen. I've been reading this book for quite some time now, probably getting close to a year <laughs> that I've been reading. All of the gods, I started at the bottom, starting from 10, which is Geb, okay. Went up 9, Ma'at, I mean, uh, Aset, 8, Sebek, 7, Het Heru, which is goddess Oshun in the Yoruba tradition, same goddess, okay. Number 6, uh... Heru, number five, Heru Kuti, okay, that's where I left off, so now I'm at number four, which is Ma'at, and this is a really well-known uh, goddess, okay, a lot of people know of the goddess Ma'at, okay, we uh, have named ourselves after her in uh, adoration and veneration, uh, there are lots of people named Ma'at out there, okay, and it, it is a beautiful name. It represents goodness, okay? It represents balance. It represents lightness of heart. It represents righteousness. And that's what you're trying to live if your name is Ma'at, okay? Or if you have named yourself Ma'at or have been initiated and have been named Ma'at. All right? It's all good. All right. So, Starting at chapter 17 of this book, volume 1 of the Metuneter, we go to Ma'at and read what our brother Ra Un Nefer Amen Shechem, or Shechem, Ra Un Nefer Amen has written concerning the goddess Ma'at and the metaphysics that is involved with this okay it's more than just a beautiful picture that you see that beautiful image of that beautiful goddess it's that but it's a lot more okay it is a holistic system okay so ma'at pronounced ma'at corresponds to the faculty within man wherein is intuited and experienced the urge to live truth According to the laws of the indwelling self, the most high self, the God self, okay? The name and the meaning are derived from the hieroglyph, that is the phonetic symbol of ma'a, the measure of a cubit. The connection of measurement with truth is one of the most profound achievements of the African mind, okay? We saw that the name of ma'at's complement, brother slash husband, Tehuti is also based on the idea of measurement. When something, one side of an equation is known, it is because we have an objective standard, the other side of the equation, against which to measure it. Hence, the double measure of or Tehuti, the ucha, uchaut metu, the weighing of words, and the weighing of the heart, judgment, etc. The construction of all things and the unfolding of all events are based on universal patterns underlying the activities of all natural forces. The construction of all things, the construction of all things, and the unfolding of all events are based on universal patterns, okay? 
underlying the activities of all natural forces. There is an order involved with all things. All things are energy, as they say, okay? And that energy is ordered, okay, by the Most High. All right. While some of the patterns underlying physical phenomena have been discovered and codified by Western scientists, for example, chemistry, physics, Africans and other non-Western people have discovered and codified the patterns governing our day-to-day -day existence and spiritual development. In other words, the quality of life and the destiny of men and nations are ruled by forces that are as measurable and subject to codification into immutable laws as are the factors governing physical and chemical phenomena. In the esoteric tradition, the branch of study governing these laws is cosmology. Okay. The embodiment of these laws, moral canon, against which the actions and beliefs of man are weighed slash measured, is ma'at. By extension, the term ma'at has several denotations in the everyday language of the Kemetic people. Straight, rule, law, canon by which the lives of men is kept straight, real, unalterable. It, the law, had never been altered since the time of Osar. Upright, righteous, and steadfast or consistent. Now this is something that is uh, what religion is all about. All religions, okay? All religions is a desire to connect to that uprightness, okay, that spiritual, that universal law by which man is supposed to be governed and is governed, okay, and often finds himself deviating. <laughs> and so religion is here to reconnect, that's what the word even means, re, religion meaning from what I remember reading, meaning uh, to reconnect, to connect like a ligament, religion, ligament, ligaments are those things within the human body that connects bone and that kind of thing. That's what the word religion means, okay? So that's what it's supposed to be uh, conjuring, I suppose. Unfortunately, religion has been co-opted. <laughs> Just about every last religion has been co-opted by uh, the workers of Set. <laughs> but that's all in its time, my people. We ought not worry about it, okay? God is in control in this place. That is the universe, okay? So, we can continue to do our religions and do what we do based on what it is that we choose to do. We will be judged, okay? Make sure you do what's right, or you're gonna get something that you may not have wanted in the in the afterlife. <laughs> Don't mess with God. In other words, by extension, the term ma'at has several denotations in the in the every, everyday language of the committed people: straight rule, law, canon by which the lives of men is kept straight, real, unalterable. It the law hath never been altered since the time of Masar upright, righteous, and steadfast or consistent. The last correspondence, steadfast or consistent, is of extreme importance. In the comedic tradition, a person cannot claim that he is living truth if he has not been consistent in the observance of the spiritual laws at each and every crossroad situation. Each and every crossroad situation and we get those crossroads situations in our lives, God sends those things to us, I believe. <laughs> and it is our test to see which way we go, whether we go righteous or not. And uh, going righteous proves to you and to God that you trust, okay? So in the comedic tradition, a person cannot claim that he is living truth if he has not been consistent in the observance of the spiritual laws at every 
each and every crossroads situation. This is why it is said, today as yesterday, tomorrow as today is truth. We have seen that the basis of truth is living by a standard imposed by our essential divine nature. A standard that is imposed, okay, you're supposed to live by this, is an imposition by the Most High within you, okay. This leads unavoidably to the question of where does man find the strength to rise to a moral standard of which God is the standard of measure. In the comedic tradition, the answer has been concealed in their metaphoric, so-called mythologic mode of communicating spiritual scientific information. Ma'at is the daughter of Ra, we are told, but its meaning has been clouded by the popular belief that Ra represents the sun or the sun god. Ra and Pronounce Ra and not Re, hence R, light, Aurum, gold, Oro, Aura, Aurora, radiation, Ardent, Fieri, etc., corresponds to the solar energy or life force stored in physical bodies. It is the Kundalini of the Hindus, the Chi of the Chinese metaphysics, Aganyu of the of the Yorubas, Dambala Wedo of the Fons, etc. Okay? It is that life force, Ra. Okay? The life force, Ra. Okay? Comes in many names, okay, that we have heard in the past we may not have quite understood what we heard. Kundalini. When you hear talk about Kundalini, usually it's connected to sex. It's more than, than it's more than that, but it is definitely that because sex leads to procreation, right? Which is life. But there's more to it than just uh, what do you, what do you, what do they call that? Uh, uh, there's that Tantra, yeah. <laughs> it's more to it than just Tantra, okay? And a lot of people look at it as just a way to have fantastic sex and then that's just it. <laughs> it's not just that. It's about recreation, procreation, and creating that energy. And that energy can be, can be used in more than just uh, sex, okay? I mean, just plain sex for its own sake, not for procreation's sake. But anyway, we've heard the term kundalini, okay? We've heard the term chi. You hear the word chi and you immediately think of a uh, Tai Chi master somewhere on a mountaintop doing poses, right? There's a reason why they're doing that, okay? And it's metaphysical. Aganyu of the Yoruba. See, now I have not even heard that term, okay? <laughs> And Dambala Wedo of the Fonz. Okay, I've heard of that. Dambala Wedo. Okay, I've heard it called Dambala. Right here, he's saying Dambada Wedo. Okay, of the Fonz. And we've heard that numerous, numerous times. But that's what it is. Is that life force energy. An abundance of life force. Which is acquired through proper diet. And anyway, let's just look at the beautiful Ma'at while I am reading. <laughs> it is acquired through proper diet, adequate exercise, and the avoidance of sensual excesses. Okay. It is required for developing the strength to live true. Okay. Now that's interesting right there, right? So you need that life force energy in order to live truth. <laughs> you need to be healthy in order to live a righteous life. You need to have the energy moving through your body that you have gotten from all of these ways, okay? A proper diet, okay? Avoidance of excess, at least sensual excess. Excesses of all kinds are no good, okay? Sensual excesses, food, 
Just just anything sensual, okay? Excess is just not a good thing. Because it goes out of alignment and out of balance, right? That's what excess means. So, an abundance of life force, which is acquired through proper diet, adequate exercise, and the avoidance of sensual excesses, is required for developing the strength to live true. The implications of this fact are that as long as people are kept ignorant of how to cultivate their life force, and worse, kept indulging in a lifestyle characterized by wrong diet, sexual excesses, etc., they will never intuit, understand, or find the strength to live truth. Society must then be doomed to ever deepening decadence, okay? Salvation, they teach, can supposedly be achieved by asking for God's forgiveness after a life of debauchery. That doesn't, that doesn't jive. It doesn't make sense, right? You, you go and you live all kinds of wicked ways, okay? You do all kinds of things, okay? You overeat. You oversex yourself. You're just over, 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 over. And then when you get sick, you feel that you should be able to pray to the Most High and have the Most High heal you. But you chose to live, not you, I'm just saying. People choose to live debauchery <laughs> in a debauched way of living, okay? That wouldn't be correct. You're not supposed to do what's wrong and then beg forgiveness for it. You're supposed to choose to do what's right, okay? With your choice of free will. Because you are a God, you have the ability to choose, okay? But the standard has already been set by the Most High. You have to follow that standard the Most High has set and do what's righteous. Okay, what's right and what's righteous, okay? Not be greedy. Greed of all kinds is no good, okay? That's why a lot of times, and this is going to sound kind of harsh, people who have done the wrong thing and then get sick, praying, calling in for a prayer warriors to come in, end up passing on from their debauchery, okay? They don't get saved. See, because they didn't live righteously. They didn't do what God requires, okay? So, if you don't choose to do the right thing, then maybe you're not going to be saved from the judgment of what it is that you did that was wrong or that some people do that's wrong. You're going to get sick, in other words, okay? You're going to you're going to become a slave to sex if you overindulge in it you're going to become a slave to whatever wrong thing out of balance thing you're doing until you get yourself back into alignment before your life is over and done okay it's harsh i know but it is ma'at we're talking about ma'at right now okay ma'at okay heart on one side the feather on the other at that time in your life okay will you succeed okay will you be judged aright okay there's a cost you have to do what's right you can't do what's wrong and then beg forgiveness at the end Okay, that wouldn't be fair to those who do what's right. Okay, but anyway, let me not beat that. Okay, all right. Ma'at is generally depicted as a woman holding the Ankh cross, symbol of the Heka Ong, in one hand, and the papyrus scepter representing the book of the law in the other. Okay, this. Not quite it. But anyway, 
Ma'at is generally depicted as a woman holding the Ankh cross, symbol of the Hekat Ankh, in one hand, and the papyrus scepter, representing the Book of the Law, in the other. On her head rests the feather, her main symbol, which is the standard against which the will, the heart slash ab, of the initiate is weighed. In one pan of the scale is placed the heart, and in the other the feather, which symbolizes the likeness of truth. The heart in one side and the feather which symbolizes the lightness of truth. That is, the absence of emotional force that characterizes the action of truth. A fact little known to Egyptologists is that in her furrow, which is a wrinkle in her face, lays concealed the scepter of flint which she confers upon the initiate after he has been found to be true of heart, to have, li to have had lived truth. That is to be used to kindle the fire of Ra is a hint regarding the life force, kundalini arousing power of living truth. This is the key of the supreme mantra, Kaitanya mantra awakening secret that has eluded many yogis for millennia okay it's really 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 profound really deep okay all right so a little bit about my art there okay now let's see we're going to continue there's more as we speak about Ma'at and now we're talking about the fundamental principles of Ma'at and let's see what written here Ma'at because the supreme law governing man's divinity is centered around his freedom to choose freedom of will the knowledge of the law is conveyed conveyed to him in such a way that allows him the freedom to follow or reject it his following it gives him success in his individual undertakings and it qualifies and prepares him for crossing the great abysm to partake in the divine power of the third sphere and higher, which is the next card that I'll be reading, which is Sebek, no, Seker, Seker. Take care. Okay, that's number three on the tree. We'll get to that soon enough. Okay. His following it gives him success, him or her, success in his or her individual undertakings, and it qualifies and prepares him or her for crossing the great abysm to partake in the divine powers of the third sphere and higher. It is directly opposed by the influences from the eighth sphere, which is the chief provider of the arguments and rationalizations that support the emotionally motivated behavior of the person-centered way of life. Okay, now on this tree of life, all of these entities, they oppose each other. Okay, there's oppositions. Okay, so three is opposed to eight which is Sebek, okay, I mean four. Four is op opposed to eight, which is Sebek, which is the dog-headed man, and I read, I read this card a while back. This is uh, the energy of the supreme uh, lawyer, a lawyer type, someone who knows how to use words and it's also ruled by Mercury, which is the governor of Gemini and uh, Virgo. Yeah, Gemini and Virgo. Mercury is the governor of Gemini and Virgo, and those both are 
known as communicators and with Shebek the dog-headed man he is the victim of his communication skills okay sometimes people know how to talk a good game but all that talk does not mean nothing in, in the bottom when you come down to the bottom line of it all <laughs> if you're imbalanced okay so there's that tendency for that that energy has to transcend and rise up okay that's what the whole purpose of this tree of life is and manifests itself here in three which is Seker and four which is Ma'at okay and the tree of life is also divided into thirds and there's the lower third which is would be nine ten eight nine and ten those energies uh, which is the lower animal man and then the top energies would be like one two and three one one two and three which is Asar Tehuti and Seker which is the higher realm the higher level man who has ascended and who has managed to get to that place of self-control in such a way that they have the power to manifest and bring forth and to conjure <laughs> the good things okay they have that that energy that kundalini energy control so that they can bring forth whatever okay and then the middle ones well I, I can't talk about that right now <laughs> I'm trying to capture all of this myself I'm getting better at it but I'm still working on it like I've said before I've been reading this, this book on and off for 20 years at least I remember homeschooling my son for when he was 12 years old and I, I had a course where I was teaching him from this Metu Netter when he was 12 okay he's 35 going on 36 now okay so that's how long I've been working with this book and believe me when I first was trying to teach him <laughs> I, was, I really couldn't <laughs> I really couldn't. I wanted to, but I couldn't. In fact, I was younger than he is now, back then, because I would have been 31 when he was 12. No, I would have been 32. 32. Yeah. So, that's how long I've been studying this book on and off. But anyway, It is directly opposed by the influences from the eighth sphere, which is the pr chief provider of the arguments. See, they're talking about arguments. Lawyers are good at arguing. Okay, that's the whole purpose of lawyers, to argue cases, right? Arguments and rationalizations that support the emotionally motivated behavior of the person-centered way of life. And should I bring this up just to throw it out there? Johnny Cochran, he was, he was par excellence, okay? He was par excellence. I remember because everybody in the whole wide world was watching that O.J. Simpson case. Okay, it, it was just so telling. Okay, you learned a lot about how things work, <laughs> how things be flipped over. Okay, things the truth looks like a lie and a lie looks like a truth. And I'm not saying O.J. Simpson was guilty or innocent. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is this there was a point in that whole discourse where, uh, somebody supposedly had overheard people talking outside of a window and they would, I guess anyway I can't I can't bring it together in that way but there was a point where someone was overheard talking and then the person said that they believed it was a black person who was talking and Johnny Cochran took that and destroyed it okay they his his thing was like how in the world can you tell someone is black by uh, listening to their voice <laughs> how in the world can you come to that conclusion is what even at the even when I was listening and watching that I was like damn look at listen to this listen to it of course you can tell but the way he spun it <laughs> made it seem like some kind of racial racist kind of stuff to sit there and say you can actually tell somebody black 
listening to their voice. Now, of course, that's not 100% correct. You can listen to see what Johnny Cochran left out conveniently is that people based on their region has act the whole aspect of accents okay if you hear an accent <laughs> then you pretty much can tell probably 80 percent of the time at least where a person is from like if I hear uh, a French accent then I can probably say oh that that was a French person <laughs> if I hear a black South Central accent yeah they exist <laughs> I could say oh you know what that's probably a black person from South Central this is truth but Johnny Cochran twisted it in such a way that made it look like a lie okay <laughs> it looked like wicked I mean the point of the matter is is that that is what Sebek I mean the eighth sphere is good at doing okay twisting things out of shape if they don't transcend that tendency and rise up okay so let's continue my people <laughs> I'll never forget that that was that was brilliant that's probably why when uh, when the verdict came all the lawyers mouths were hanging open and shocked that OJ had gotten off <laughs> everybody who was a lawyer on both sides <gasps> uh, uh, lawyer Kardashian I can't even remember Robert Kardashian yeah I think that was his name <laughs> the whole Kardashian their dad <laughs> his mouth was hanging open <laughs> the black guy uh, Darden <gasps> uh, Marsha oh <gasps> everybody was like oh <laughs> y'all didn't know who y'all were dealing with y'all were dealing with Master Sebek over uh, Sakara over there Johnny Cochran most high God thank you for the gift of Johnny Cochran <laughs> okay may he rest in peace in heaven okay all right so now we're going to talk about my odd the spiritual aspect because all of these circle around the main character which is Heru which I have read already calling him the superhero okay he's ruled by the Sun okay he is Leo okay he is the sign of Leo Mag magnanimous large giving but in control okay the center of the whole thing on the stage okay all the rest of these guys sort of circle around him okay Heru okay he is the person okay alright not to say that none of the rest are not important but continued study will make you understand what this is about a spiritual enlightened will which is an enlightened will okay which is the hair root positive there's hair root positive and hair root negative in fact there's positive and negative in all of them and in fact these cards represent that okay the dots on the upper left hand corner of the card right hand I can't tell <laughs> It's left hand for me uh, is in divination telling you whether it's a positive card or positive or negative okay and that's how this card will be read and two two circles filled in is a positive okay and then there's this one with four circles filled in and that's a negative okay there's two negative aspects and two positive aspects and then there's the the clear the card that's clear that's the most uh, that is the most perfect that's a positive but it's, it's a, 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 a balanced kind of positive okay I should read what it is it's in here okay let me find it because I want to read it right now so that we can uh, understand since I brought it up <laughs> okay yes my people it's starting to come together for us okay it's starting to come together
Okay. Let's see. I hope I find this. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Okay. There's a lot involved in it. That's for sure. Okay, here it is. Here it is. You see where it's broken down right there, positive and negative. Okay, so this represents Hetep, which is also called Hotep. Okay, and it is positive. And then this card, all open. No number, no circles filled in, is called two. Ma'at, okay, two, which means yes, okay, I believe, okay, and it is positive, okay, and then when there are three filled in, like with this one, it means tim to chas, which is a negative, okay. And then when there are, when there is only one filled in, like with this head hair roof that I have here, that would be called two to chas. So there's tim to chas, tim meaning no, and two to chas, two meaning yes. And to chas, I'm not sure what that means, I gotta figure it out. But anyway, we will come back to that at another time. I don't want to go too far off course here. But an uh, enlightened will, a Heru positive, is one that has been taught the laws that must be followed in order to receive the benefic beneficent gifts of heaven. Amenta. Okay. I used to know a brother, Facebook fam, whose name was Amenta, which is heaven. See, you have the choice. You can choose to do the debauchery. But you're not going to get the, the gifts of heaven. Okay. No matter how many prayers you pray. Okay. It is the work you do. It's the, the way you choose to live. In order to access that intuition within you. Which is where the gifts of heaven. The windows of heaven exist. It is inside of you. Inside of your spirit. You have to be able to intuit it. You have to live light in order to be able to intuit this. Okay. You live a life of righteousness. And you live light. Okay. And you overcome these aspects. And you get to that amenta. Okay. And then that's how you then conjure. Okay. Because of its full understanding of the law of heaven. It does not chafe itself in restless rebellion against the constraints suggested by the law. It knows that the law guarantees all things its day in the sun. The mundane. If I were a newly arrived being from another planet and were to say to you that I observed people in New York for three months and therefore concluded that light clothing is their mode of dress, you would correct me by pointing out that although my thinking was logically correct, my conclusion was not true. Why? Obviously, I have only observed a part of the whole, while you have observed New Yorkers through all the seasons. My art corresponds, therefore, to the ability to understand the interdependence and interrelationship between the parts and the whole and with each other, the synthesis, through the use of abstract analogies. It is the logical process, the cosmologics, that enable the testing of the truth of a premise. Unlike Sebek, unlike the Sebek faculty, which processes connections in a sequential serial fashion, Ma'at processes them in a synchronistic parallel mode. While we can only see how things follow each other at the Sebek level, here we can also see how they work simultaneously to carry out the central theme. And that is, this is 
this is Western culture. <laughs> this is Western man, okay? And the analytical parallel uh, line by line kind of sequential way that Western man works, okay? It doesn't perceive the whole thing. So it, it'll do one thing and then it'll cause an effect, an un foreseen effect to happen that they never they didn't foresee it because they can't see the whole they only see part by part for example with the medical establishment they create all kinds of drugs they give you the drug and then you end up with some other kind of uh, problem that comes up what did, what do they call that when you get some kind of a, a reaction that they hadn't foreseen okay because they were not able to see the whole picture or even to think in that way so that there's no holism involved so you end up with a reaction and then what do they do they give you a different medicine to take which will cause you a second reaction it reminds me of a story that I read as a child in the cat in the hat <laughs> the cat in the hat an old story an old story book by Dr. Seuss who was he was something else. He was a trip. He was he was an enlightened being writing stories for children back in those days. But the cat in the hat came to this little boy's house. The little boy was sitting. He was home alone. Okay, back, he wrote this book like back in 1961 or something. So the little boy's parents wasn't there. Cat in the hat came rolling in, you know, like Barnum and Bailey, <laughs> and was teaching the boy something I can't remember, but what they wanted to do was he did something and it dirtied up the house <laughs> it dirtied up the house and he then wanted to clean it up so he took the dirt that he created put it in a bathtub that ends up leaving a ring on the bathtub so then he took he he the boys was the little boy was saying no you can't leave that my mom's gonna have a fit when she comes back and see this ring around the tub so that cat in the hat's like oh okay well we'll take this and put it somewhere else okay he took it and took the dirt and put it so it ended up somewhere else that they didn't perceive or into it that that could happen end up putting it from place to place from pl i used to love this book when i was a little kid and the dirt ends up he finally gets the dirt and puts it outside of the house and the snow turned the snow all dirty <laughs> in other words the problem just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger because see the cat in a hat is a Sebek <laughs> a Sebek personality that don't know what he do and he think he's smart but he ain't okay and it, he finally figured out how to clean the whole mess up but not before uh, he turned uh, he made a huge mess huge knocked the house out the house was a freaking mess but they managed to clean it up before the boy's mom got back <laughs> but anyway the point I'm making is that you have to be able to see the full picture and you have to have your intuition engaged in order to do that okay you can't do that if you someone who thrives on excess okay excess especially sensual excess you're not going to have that intuitive and that's just the way God made it. If you are focused in the lower sensual aspect of man which dwells in the lower, okay, Geb, God avert, and nothing's wrong with it, but it's just the lower and offset and uh, Sebek, these guys, then you need to, uh, you know you're not reaching these levels until you transcend those things they all have their place Sebek is not wicked in and of itself he has a limited aspect okay in the whole this is the entirety okay <laughs> you have to always be moving forward and upward in order to reach a menta and that's what we want to do that's what we should want to do if you're trying to live on that high level where you can conjure and bring manifest you hear so many people talking about manifesting manifest manifest this manifest that manifest 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 man first of all what is it that you're trying to manifest and why okay what is it that you're trying to manifest and why and is it will you end up with some kind of a uh, 
outcome that you hadn't perceived, okay, that you hadn't taken into consideration that you didn't see. <laughs> what is it that we want to manifest? Okay, that's the first question, but a lot of people talk about manifestation, but what? Most people feel like the end result is to manifest money, okay? And I'm I'm overcoming my my problem with that money part, okay? I'm working on that. Manifest money, but money is a tool, right? What is it that you want your money to do for you? What what is it that you want to make your money do? So there's more to it. You have to put more thought into it, okay? Most people who talk about manifesting money, the end game for them is just to be a millionaire. Just I just want to be a millionaire, just whatever, I don't care, just a millionaire. A multi-millionaire. But for what purpose? <laughs> what reason do you want to be a multi-millionaire? Okay. Do you want to be like Oprah? That's that's a lofty goal. From what I can see, Oprah's done huge amounts. She's gifted all kinds of stuff. <laughs> She's gifted education, cars, materialism, just just all kinds of stuff, okay? So if you want to be a philanthropist so that you can be, you want to be a millionaire so that you can be a philanthropist, well then sh go for that one. Go for it. Because a lot of people need help, okay? <laughs> That's the reason I would want to be a millionaire, to be a philanthropist. I want to be a philanthropist without first having to be a millionaire anyway. But if a million dollars comes and lands in my hand, then that's all good. It's more money to give away. <laughs> but anyway, okay? So that manifestation comes from the intuitive aspect which is the heaven of the heaven within okay and that's what heaven is about heaven is not a place somewhere in the sky or maybe it is who knows I don't know <laughs> but if you read the Bible the Christian Bible from a metaphysical and a metaphorical perspective then and if you understand that the Bible is an occulted book, okay, that talks from a hidden angle, <laughs> it talks in metaphors, okay. The stories are metaphors for for the spirit of man, okay. Then you understand that heaven is part of the spirit of man, okay, and uh, you die and you are resurrected and you you hang on the cross and all these things all of that stuff is metaphorics and metaphysics okay it's not anyway let me not go there okay <laughs> okay let's mundane if i were okay i already read that okay it is the logical process, cosmologics, that enables the testing of the truth of a premise. Unlike Sebek, the Sebek faculty, which processes connections in a sequential, serial fashion, that's, that's what I just explained. You go step by step, you don't know what's going to happen with the next step until you do it. <laughs> okay, my aunt processes them in a synchronistic, parallel mode, meaning that you see all aspects, you see every you see the whole thing the end from the beginning like the Bible says <laughs> okay my eye processes them in a synchronistic parallel mode while we can only see how things follow each other at the Sebek level here we can also see that how they work simultaneously to carry out the central thing okay and that's much more vision right there okay that's sequential through it, we can find our way in and out of the forest, not through a specific signpost marking certain trees, landmarks, etc., as with Sebek, but through the ability to orient ourselves through the cardinal points, literally or symbolically. <laughs> okay, you know what time it is when you do it in, in that angle, okay? You have all the information, so you can't even get lost, okay? You don't need a signpost. You don't need an, uh, a, a marking, oh, here you are at the, this is here, so now go there. You know where you are from whatever place you are within that entire forest, okay? <laughs> okay. If you are lacking the knowledge of cosmograms, 
mandalas, tree of life, for example, sim symbol, symbol blueprints, or the ability to synthesize, you must seek counsel from people who meet the criteria. That's where you're talking about the diviners who know all these things, okay? They know they're sitting there divining. <laughs> they, they just have all the information. They just know this stuff. That's why it, it, it's, uh, it's strange to people of today when they learn that the ancient ones who did not have the technology knew of the planets and the alignments of the planets and things like this, okay. Or those Africans, I think the Dogon peoples, who knew of all the, 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 the stars and these things like this. And then when people go to check them, using their telescopes and whatever, they find that they, they're correct. How in the world these people sitting in grass huts know this, okay. <laughs> grass it's, <laughs> it's this right here that's how they knew it okay all right they had that wisdom from the Amenta okay all right meditation with the Heka of Ma'at will guide you to act in a manner that reflects the interdependence between all things you will thus widen your sphere of acquaintance, influence, and sharing, giving and receiving. As your ability to accumulate grows, your sense of interdependence between all things will prevent you from seeking more than your due. All right, my people, where are we? 56 minutes? Okay, let's get a move on this thing here. Okay, so now we're talking about the shaping factors of failure. Because, like I said, there's a positive and negative with these cards, which is laid out, okay? So, for Ma'at, an unenlightened individual, a Heru negative, a Heru negative, okay? And this card actually is a negative card, because three of the four circles is filled in. It's a Heru negative, okay? So, a Heru negative... As opposed in when we're talking about Ma'at, okay. Okay, where am I? Is ignorant of or does not believe in divine law. Wow, that's a deep one right there. You are ignorant of it or you don't believe in it. Okay. Divine law. His spiritually unlawful behavior brings him thus into conflict with others and many factors opposing his will. Okay. Ah. It's it's a it's a journey to come to the place of believing in divine law, okay? From this perspective, okay, not from a religious perspective because it's different that way. Okay. All right, so you have more than too many problems when you don't believe in divine law. See, you will then break those divine laws and will come up against all kinds of problems in your life, okay? Making your life so much harder. Like breaking the divine law of uh, smoking or something. <laughs> okay. Alright, so now we're at Let's see what the title of this is. The Metutu themselves. These are what we call Metutu. Okay. Words of power. Words of God. Okay. And so. The Ma'at card. When we are talking from the comedic perspective. The name of that card is. Ma'at. Shashat. Shashayit. Sefkit. Or Albut. Albut. Okay, so there's a lot of names for Ma'at, okay. Seshat, or Seshet, I've seen it, Seshet, okay, spelled Seshet. And I've seen quite a few people with the name Seshet, okay. And here it's saying Seshet, 
Sevkit, Sevkit, S-E-F-K-I-T, and Aubut, A-U-B-U-T. Okay. All right. Now, from a Canaanite perspective, is Tzatkiel, E-L, Tzatki, T-Z, as in zebra, A-D-K-I dash L. Okay. In a Kabbalistico, it is Gedula, G-E-D as in dog, U-L-A-H, and Chesed. Now, I remember when I was in church, when I was going to my black church here in Oakland, the magnificent uh, Allen Temple Baptist Church, when we were in our Sunday school adult Sunday school <laughs> where we talk about all kinds of things especially politics we started studying about this thing chesed okay and that's the term chesed we were studying chesed but I didn't stay long enough to get all the way into it but just the fact that they were even talking about it <laughs> was getting kinda close they were trying to get close to you know, a different way of looking at it. That's why I loved that church when I was in it. Okay. It wasn't perfect, but it doesn't matter. It was good. It still is. Okay. One thing about it is that they did everything from an Afrocentric or African based perspective or a black power based perspective. As a matter of fact, the church is on the, uh, uh, the land that was the Black Panther Party's headquarters over there on 85th and East 14th Street. There's even a, a plaque, a stone that has been put forth uh, that even speaks to that. Okay, even uh, when uh, Huey Newton passed, his service was at that church. Okay. So there's a connection there. Okay. So anyway, Canaanite is Tazaki El, Kabbalistico is Gedula and Chesed, Yoruba is Aje Chagulia. Okay. And Indus Kush is Lakshmi. I see lots of people with the name Lakshmi. And such a beautiful name. Well, it means Ma'at, means balance. Okay. Lakshmi. Okay. And the Yoruba name Ajay Chagulia reminds me of uh, Kwanzaa and one of the principles of Kwanzaa being Kuji Chagulia. Okay. There's 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 some there's something there, right? Kuji Chagulia and I can't remember I think it's cooperative work cooperative economics I can't remember <laughs> that's a shame I should remember okay but there's Aj Chagulia what written here okay okay now sphere four is where it is Ma'at is sphere four on the tree of life the planet is Jupiter and the day is Thursday now though she's holding a uh, scales in her hand and it would just seem like it should be connected with Lib Libra well Libra is ruled by Venus and so that's not what this is about it can get tricky when you start making this correspondence but anyway it's Jupiter okay Ma'at is ruled by Jupiter if you look at it from uh, an astrological perspective now the color is sky blue for spiritual Heka and yellow for a planetary Heka. There's two different types of Heka, okay? Or Hekau, plural, for spiritual word, okay? Spiritual, uh, you guys know what I mean. <laughs> okay, the number is two. The gem is yellow sapphire and the metals is the metal is tin okay gems and metal yellow sapphire lapis lazuli and tin the time of year is the sidereal full moon in Pisces 
Now that throws me off, okay? Because they're saying Jupiter is the planet, and they're saying that the full moon is in Pisces. It's the time of year. Pisces is not ruled by Jupiter that I know that I... Anyway, there's more for me to understand and learn. Okay, so, esoteric herbalism. The baths are thuja, anise, and honeysuckle. The oils are anise and oak moss, and the incense, the incense is aloes and anise. Okay, the hekau, the mantra, is the words of power. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Hekau is the words of power, the mantras. Okay, the spiritual is shering, and the planetary is Aung. Grang, green, grown. Okay, the spiritual direction is southeast, and the mundane direction is west. And the personality portfolio, through its action on the Kaya bit, which is the animal spirit, the hot and moist energy of Jupiter has the following effects on the personality. Sphere nine. The emotional traits, the positive ones, just, equilibrated. Holistic, generous, sharing, optimistic, liberal, magnanimous, moral sense, striving for advancement and wealth in a positive manner, religious, successful, fortunate, law-abiding, fair, charitable, deferring to elders, no trafficking with evil, grateful, prudent. Now, for me... <coughs> Well, let me finish this. Now, the negative ones, the negative emotional traits are greedy, negatively expansive for food, sex, material things, etc. Pleasure-seeking, boastful, extravagant, unlawful, materialistic, wasteful, unsocial, unsuccessful, unfortunate, quote-unquote, hypocritical regarding religion and the law, false religious legal and scientific tenets okay so now for uh since my odd is ruled by jupiter what the emotional traits are i find myself with those traits definitely okay as for uh dealing with money and acquiring and striving for advancement and wealth in a positive way yeah that's what suits me so I can finally release my frustration and angst and anger about wealth and wealth building okay I can uh, separate the negative from the positive and, and not just focus on the negative okay and get mad concerning the negative and instead focus on the positive and be thankful okay as for the positive it is striving for advancement and wealth in a positive manner for me a positive manner would be so that you can share so that you can help so that you can build for others and not just for yourself for yourself as well but not just for yourself not in a greedy not in a greedy, grasping, holding on and hoarding kind of way, okay? Not for no reason, <laughs> but for a, a magnanimous and good reason, yeah. So, let me release my frustrations, okay? Concerning wealth, once and for all. Because it's been kind of a... It's taking too much space real estate within my spirit <laughs> okay so the mental traits syn synth synthesis gaining insight into things by unifying them let me hold the card up <laughs> gaining insight into things by unifying them through the use of abstract analogies hence well fitted for philosophical and theoretical scientific religious pursuits okay my people excuse me <laughs> social correspondences careers functions judges very experienced lawyers theoretical scientists 
theoreticians, theologians, bishops, cardinals, bankers, merchants, upper echelon priests and priestesses, fortune hunters, officials, managers. Once upon a time I was, uh, in a previous life, <laughs> I was, uh, what do you call that, dang, <laughs> the person who deals with counting the money, accountant. But not really. I was accounting for the bookstore. I worked my way. I, I didn't work my way up to that position. I just, from having worked in this store and done numerous positions, I got to the place where I was the one who dealt with the money. Okay, not a, an accountant per se, but whatever that term is, I can't think right now. <laughs> uh, but I'm the one who counted the money every day and made the deposits in the bank for the store, Stacy's Bookstore back in the day. And I really liked that job because I, and it was interesting because the store, what was, what they made the office for this position was a room that was locked from the outside and only a few people, like the, the, the top people, had access to this room. Me, because I worked there. <laughs> I was in there. It, it was a locked room. What it really was, was a storage closet that they turned into an office. And I really, and, they had, and I'm sitting here with a gigantic safe that I know the combination to. Counting money day by day, every day, thousands of dollars and making deposits every single day. And I had... And I and I used to think about this how how this money never tempted me <laughs> how I never felt like stealing it you know I never felt like stealing it I thought you know what I could if I was some other kind of person I could steal this money <laughs> you know I could steal money you know but I and they I believe they understood that I wouldn't be that one okay that would want to I didn't want to and I guess that projected myself because I never took courses to beca become an accountant or, or whatever you call it, a money person. <laughs> I didn't ever take any classes for that. I just got to that position. And it was it was a fun position actually. I enjoyed counting that money. And I had to reconcile the receipts, make sure I had to go through all the receipts and uh, the, the register tapes and reconcile everything, make sure that nobody made no mistakes mischarging people or anything like that you know there was a way to reconcile it and I can't even tell you I had to reconcile what was on the receipts with what money was in the drawer and all these things and if there was any mistakes I would have to go down and try to investigate and figure out and correct the mistake it was a fun job but I I, I remember feeling at the time that I was not tempted to steal the money that was something that was just a part of me. So I shouldn't have such anger at people. Or just the, the whole issue of money, period. <laughs> it's time to release that, you know. Uh, wealth is part of what we are about. And yeah, it, 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 it contains money. <laughs> Mammon. <laughs> I have to release it because it, it's just not serving me to... to, to waste so much anxiety concerning it and always focusing on those who are mishandling money or misusing misrepresenting not doing good things okay I'm not Heru Kuti uh, yeah I'm not the Avenger <laughs> I don't have to worry about God has that under control with those who are the Avengers you know Universal law comes back and deals with those people who do the wrong thing. So why should I be upset about it? Why should I be angry and always calling people and talking about money and people chasing money? Why should I do that? <laughs> I'm done with that. I'm done right today. Okay. So. I'm a, a Oprah wannabe if I'm going to be uh, with money. Okay. So. I respect those who are as well. Okay, we're doing the good things. Okay, all right. 
So the mental trade synthesis, gaining insight into things by unifying them through the use of abstract analogies, hence well fitted for philosophical and theoretical scientific religious pursuits. So, so, social correspondences, careers, functions, judges, very experienced lawyers, theoretical scientists, Theoreticians, theologians, bishops, cardinals, bankers, merchants, upper echelon priests and priestesses, fortune hunters, officials, managers. The spiritual portfolio, doctrine of divine law and order, optimism, faith, love, abundance, love power, <laughs> success in an individual undertaking, spiritual advancement, spiritual function. She walks with a papyrus scepter. She achieves abundance. Ma'at's papyrus scepter fuses divine law with the abundance that follows from living it. Its color, green, symbolizes abundance and fruitfulness, while the papyrus she, which, is, which was used for writing, symbolizes the book of the law. Now this book of the law will not depart from thy mouth that was a scripture in the bible the book of that really used to stick with me and now i can't quite remember the book of the law will not depart from your mouth but will remain in your heart or i can't remember <laughs> oh my goodness it's something like that <laughs> anyway let me not get thrown up again Its color green symbolizes abundance and fruitfulness, while the papyrus, which was used for writing, symbolizes the book of the law. She realizes that even her enemies are integral parts of the whole, and thus works to, and shares with them. The Shet raises her consciousness to the hall of the Metunetter and realizes the ultimate unity of all things. There are no irreconcilable opposites in the world. This is the source of an undaunted optimism, faith, and inner joy which reveals themselves in a peaceful, genuine smile and relaxed, hetep state of being even in the midst of setbacks and the greatest of external difficulties. Ma'at, the divine law, is the food and drink of Ra, the life force. She nourishes her life force, Ra, with divine law and gives endlessly of her love, share, seeking nothing in return. There is no end to her worldly fortune as her giving is answered from the depths of Newt. Perseverance in adhering to a belief system based on the cosmological arrangement and synthesis of divine laws, such as achieved through the Tree of Life, leads to success in all undertakings as the view of the unity that is concealed in the midst of the multiplicities that life presents to us is never lost. A collection of wise sayings and divine laws, however true, cannot save us if they are not arranged into an integral system of guiding us in our day-to-day -day existence. We have seen how the abstract analogies present, presented in this book, especially the symbols of the Tree of Life, serve to unify specifics across general categories. Unless the elements making up our belief system, whether secular or religious, are unified okay, in this manner, they become enslaving agents of dogma instead of vehicles of salvation. Okay. Special correlates. Okay. Wow, there's a lot here about Ma'at. Well, I'm going to read it too. Ma'at, the first. Slash Amen. Amen is the major source of the optimism, and this is Amen, okay? No, this is Asar. This is Amen, okay? This card is the card Amen, okay? Amen Ra, Amen, okay? 
Amen is the major source of the optimism, sharing, and lawfulness of Ma'at. The source of all things is infinite and is held by all in common as we all originate from and have our being in Amen. There are no personal possessions. Nothing can be lost in sharing and what is not returned by another will come from the depths of the infinite. Ma'at slash Asar. Now this is Asar. Asar, okay. I think he would represent Jesus, okay. <laughs> okay, that God man, okay. Ma'at slash Asar, love, which is sharing, which is giving, seeking nothing in return, not asking if you deserve, but the fulfilling of a genuine need. It is the day to day expression of the unity of being represented by Asar and is the synthesis of all divine laws. Ma'at Tehuti. So where's Tehuti? Here is Tehuti. Interesting, Tehuti is ruled by Jupiter as well. Number two on the tree of life, okay, Tehuti. Tehuti. Okay, Tehuti, scribe, I believe. Okay, Ma'at is written law, is the written law that depends on the intuitions of the sage Tehuti. Ma'at Seker, now this is Seker, number three on the tree of life. Take care. He's holding three things. A crook, a flail, and um, some other thing. It seems that he's ruled by uh, Saturn, I believe. Okay. I think that's a sign for Saturn. Alright. While Ma'at corresponds to the communication of the divine law to man's mind, Seker is the imposition of the law from within. For example, while we may choose to follow Ma'at, Seker forces us to follow the law. And Ma'at Herukuti. Without the conception of the means to enforce the law, there can be no conception of the law. Okay? So, I see we're going through the whole range because Ma'at is a very important card as well as Heru. So here is Heru Kuti which I've already done a couple of weeks ago. That is the one who enforces, okay? Who puts forth, uh, uh, what, what, what was I saying? <laughs> the law who forces the law in other words okay divine justice okay okay reaping and sowing yeah that's that's what I'm trying to say okay without the conception of the means to enforce the law there can be no conception of the law so yeah if a law can't be enforced then what is a joke okay so for those who break the law the divine laws and they feel that there's no retribution or there's no enforcement that would then make God to be weak that can't be true right <laughs> all right see Heru note that while Seker forces you to follow the law Heru Kuti punishes you for breaking it okay Ma'at Heru as there is no compulsion to observe the law at the Ma'at stage, as is otherwise with the care, the ability to live the law depends on the men of work of the Heru stage. Okay, Ma'at Sebek. The fourth sphere, Ma'at, is complementary to the eighth, Sebek. While Ma'at 
corresponds to the perception of the abstract analogies that tie events and things sharing the same qualities, although they belong to separate families and species. Sebek is the perception of the concrete definitions, names, etc., that distinguish species and parts of concrete wholes from one another. Thus, while the unifying function of Ma'at makes for social harmony, success, and prosperity, and the segregative function of Sebek is the chief source of social disharmony and difficulties. Okay? Now, the biological because this is holistic, right? We're talking about the correspondences from a spiritual and a biological perspective. So this is what would help us with living healthy lives, pretty much, okay. Physiology. Like Venus, Jupiter is responsible for the conservation, preservation, and expansion of the life force and spiritual power. It is the establisher of physiological equilibrium and fruitfulness. Hence, it is the fortuna major, the major fortune, and greater healing force of the body. Its action is centered in the liver where it is in charge of the production and storage of blood sugar, glycogenesis breakdown of protein waste into urea, etc., and the creation and regulation of sex hormones, for example, the destruction of excess estrogen, etc. It also exerts a major influence on the arterial circulation and arterial blood itself. Pathology, accumulation of proteid, protein and other waste in the blood liver derangements, stenic plethora or localized swelling, accumulation of adipose tissue, adipose sarcoma, larcus, lar, lardaceous and solenid cancer of the mammary, pancreatic glands, vascular congestion leading to hemorrhages, apoplexy, epistasis, etc. Fatty Fatty degeneration, sugar in the blood, which is diabetes. Illnesses from pleasurable excesses like diet, sex, etc. So a person can get sick from too much sex. Okay. I've heard men talking about the strange thing. Of <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to say it. I've heard more than a few men talk about this, the ones who are bold enough to say it, especially as it pertains to masturbation that Dehudi um, Ma'at Ra talked about this. <laughs> he talked about it in one of his videos when he was on YouTube back in the day and that video got so many views but not too many comments. <laughs> Men were watching it but they weren't saying nothing. <laughs> but I also I also saw I also saw a video talking about the when you overdo it <laughs> you become an addict you become addicted to it masturbation and it, then it it has a, a physiological and a emotional and a mental thing that goes with it I was watching it there's this video that I watched just recently I can't even remember the name of the uh the program it's a YouTube program where people are meeting each other just random people and they're talking to each other really profound and it was two young people two black young people who were just meeting it was like a blind meeting and that's what and they talk about real deep things and this brother was admitting that he did it too much and uh, the girl was like saying well, what's wrong with that? And he said, well, no, wait a minute. <laughs> he started, they were being real open and talking. It was something about not having any restraints or restrictions of whatever on you, feeling free. And these were two people who, two black folks who would consider themselves out of the norm, obviously. They they were out there and they, 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 they did life a different way than what's normal for black folks. Okay, so he was saying too much of it messes, messed his mind up to the point where he said he don't feel he don't feel like waiting, dealing with a real woman, 
and going through the emotional thing and interacting re emotionally with her and not only that looking at a, 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 a real woman in her body and if it's not perfect as whatever perfection means to a man who has been programmed by watching crazy porn stuff okay of women who are not real <laughs> unrealistic stuff so for him he 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 gets turned off by real women <laughs> it's a serious thing so this is part of <laughs> this is that thing boy i tell you when you go outside of what's normal and you overdo what's not normal it will come back on you Heru Kuti don't play games, okay? <laughs> Heru Kuti does not play, okay? Anyway, when you receive... Okay, let, let's finish it. Comedic therapeutics, joy, analeptic, alterative, nurturing, spermatogenic, emollient, fattening, equilibrating, anabolic, promoter, steroids, etc. Wow, it's hard. Sometimes it's hard to read this book because the words, he, he pulled these words straight out of a DSM volume. These are little, these words are the Latin words. <laughs> oh my God, it's like, I can't, anyway. <laughs> Chinese medicine. It, it needs to be translated. This stuff. Liver slash gallbladder system. Damp disease patterns. Use herbs that clear heat and disperse dampness. Artes, Artemisa capillaris minor, bumpulrum, pustul, pus, pulsatia. Herbs, herbs is another one with the Latin names. It'd be like, what is this you talking about? <laughs> we need, and then for the Chinese, eight corrections powder. So, oh. All right, there's a lot involved when it comes to my art, okay? When you receive, wow, one hour and 32 minutes video long. That's all right. When you receive a my art reading, watch out, okay? You are being counseled to stop on your forward movement to achieve your goal and to meditate on the abstract principles that will enable you to acquire a broad view of the subject at hand. Meditation. Since the material from which you must draw upon can only be acquired through many years of study and experience, middle-aged individuals, 35 to 56, will be most successful. So they're even saying that young people, it'll be much more difficult for younger people because they just don't have that experience, life experience, generally speaking. Okay. Although elders are most likely to possess such experiences, their metabolism, which is already on the downswing, may keep them from achieving the great success that Ma'at's hot and moist energy forecasts. That's a trip, okay? That's why you hear the saying, a lot of people say, youth is wasted on the young. <laughs> it goes something like that. It's like, by the time you learn something, then you're so tired in the body that you can't move forward in what you have taken a lifetime to learn. You don't have the energy. <laughs> I can certainly say that. Sometimes I feel that way. All right, my people. So there it is. Reading from the Metu Netter by Ra'an Nefer Amin. Volume 1, The Great Oracle of Tehuti and the Egyptian System of Spiritual Cultivation. And we have read Ma'at. Very profound, very deep, very... A whole lot to know, okay? A whole lot involved with Ma'at, okay? This is where the judgment is made. So, of course, there's a lot. <laughs> Ruled by the energy of Jupiter, okay? Number four on the tree of life. Next, I will be reading Sekhar, ruled by Saturn. I think that's a Saturn signal symbol right there. I'm not, I think it is. <laughs> All right, so that will be the next card that I do very soon to come. 
So, my people, thank you for hanging out with me for a whole hour and a half as we move forward learning about this is the stuff that our ancestors knew. This was that stuff that our great knowers, our wise people understood back in those days. And it was actually accessible to anybody who would be willing to put the work in. Okay, And those who did reached heaven, Amenta, and all kinds of blessings came pouring down through those windows. Okay, You have to be willing to do what it is that's required and learn what it is. Thank God that there's this book, the Metu Netter, coming to us with this beautiful information from an African, Afrocentric perspective so that we can understand and know that yes, we were the ones who understood this, okay? We were the teachers back in those old days, okay? And not to say that we are superior in any way to anybody, but we definitely are not inferior to anybody, anyway, okay? So we must know our place, take our place, stand up tall, as my aunt would say, with dignity, okay? Because we have what is necessary to build and rebuild, okay? Relink religion, okay? <laughs> Religare. All right, reconnect to that high estate within ourselves. All right, my people, peace and love to each and every one of you on today. Blessings.